do it. All right, guys, I heard somebody say 40 minutes. That's what it's got to be. It's got to be 40 full minutes. Don't save yourself, because we're going to sub some guys early and get in the routine a little bit, and then everybody's got to be ready to rock and roll, all right? Let's go. It's a mad dash between now and March to get as many of these Big Ten wins as you can, and it's one after another. So that's why they call it the grind. And the other big thing is the old saying goes like this. Don't let one loss become two. And that's where I think we are right now. The top of the circle. No good rebound, Michigan State. Oh, pull a pass down to Kohler. Kohler's bank shot is good. Dribbling around, down low goes to Kohler. Oh, another forward pass. He catches, lays it up, and it's in. And he's got six already. Walker has it. He's going to go all the way. Bank shots up, and it's in. And they fouled him. There's a floor general, A.J. Hogard. Just going to have to heave it up. Oh! Three forty-eight to go, and Michigan State now leads by a deuce, 28-26. Now, this is going to be a low-scoring game, so threes are going to be paramount. Knocked away, but finally MSU gets it back. It goes to Joey Hauser. He got a three. New York is considered the mecca of basketball. To be a guard out of New York playing at a high level, you have to be tough in some way, form, or fashion. So I definitely see that from a lot. Especially when it's the games on the line, we see Tyson come through and make a lot of big shots. That's just things that he does. That's just part of his toughness in growing up playing basketball in New York. To Walker, wide open for three, and it's good. Walker regains, and it takes it to the rim. Floater by Walker, it's good. And Walker's got 21. No matter how good or something I played, you know, they always chose somebody else over me, even if I outplayed them. So I always did my part. And I just keep that with me every time I play. I got to prove people wrong. I'm from uh, Westbury, New York, in Long Island, not too far from the city. As a child growing up, Tyson was very competitive. He didn't want to be the last one, he wanted to be the first one, so he acted like it. My sister was gone. By the time I really started growing up, my other sister was out the house, she was at school. The only competition was like me and my brother, really, just try to outdo him. Tyson was always the smallest person of the group, and he always played with older kids. That's what made him stand out, by being a little tough kid. I got into playing basketball when I was like three or four. My dad was coaching my brother at some tournament and they made me play with him. And then that's when I really started. From then on, I just thought I was just playing basketball. I would go play in summer tournaments, AAU. What I remember about Tyson is he walked on the court. They used to always say, look at the little guy on the court. Be nice. We used to laugh and be like, you don't have to be nice to him. He's going to play and it was always fun watching him go against the older kids and be better than them. If you couldn't stand up for yourself in New York, you're gonna get ran out the park or off the court. I chose Northeastern because the relationship I had with the coaches, you know, it just being in the middle of Boston, I like the city feel. As a freshman, that was real cool to play in the championship game. You know, with a chance to go to the tournament, and we lost to a really good Hofstra team. I feel like that helped me for my next year there. You know, just know what it took to win. I did a lot of scoring there, a lot of passing. 
And then coming here, you know, I found a good balance. What made me transfer to Michigan State was just the culture of it. Being on campus here, it's completely different. You know, everybody's a big Michigan State fan growing up, wanted to be here. At home, we don't really have a school people really want to grow up and go to that's in New York. That was like a real shock for me. Everything here is Michigan State. There's nothing else. The decision was ultimately his, so we were going to be happy no matter where he decided to go. Just to have him that opportunity to play on the biggest stage was all we wanted. And that's he ultimately did. I just remember we got to stop, and I just told Tyson to take us home. Well, right now, Michigan State just got to focus on this last play. More than likely, Michigan State run a pick and roll here, try to get, I'd imagine, Tyson Walker going towards the rim. We got 15 seconds on this shot clock. Christie's going to flip it in, and he does in the backcourt over there to Tyson Walker. 10 on the shot clock. Walker dribbling out front. Spartans going for the final shot in the win. Walker with the ball four. Somebody's got to shoot. Here's the three. The Purdue shot was something I felt like I'd do in my backyard every time I was growing up. You know, the same little step back move. You know, counting down to your head. He got it! He got it! Tyson Walker step back against Travian Williams, and he electrifies this crowd. Tyson Walker may have just given Michigan State its biggest win of the season. Coming here was just another way of trying to show people that I could play on any level. Head fake breaks to the basket. Now around the horn it goes. Walker for three. What beautiful ball movement, and Walker is on fire right now. I think he's electrifying him. I think he's fun to watch. And just to see him make that transition from a mid-major to the high major and have an impact on our program, how he does, it's just, just fun to see. From Michigan State, I feel like I'm growing up. You know, just I don't let anything really bother me anymore. Just try to be easy going, you know, never too high, never too low. You got to know what you can do, and you got to do it to the best of your ability. After I'm done playing basketball, I just hope I'm a role model with people, you know, just person people would always call, just like how we call the alumni that graduated from here. We talk to them all the time. I just hope I could be one of those people. Not strapped in. Hot. Thank you. Today is our annual sled hockey double at Bud Ice and we do it to help raise our disability acceptance on campus. One of our favorite events of the year. Playing some sled hockey with some obviously new friends now, so it's pretty cool. Some of the familiar faces from last year, so we got some team cam, you know. like getting in the sled and like obviously being able to walk around and stuff it's you obviously got to be grateful for that they're pretty talented you know you got to really give it to them obviously some of them can't walk to be able to come out here and do this with them is pretty special
We've been super, super happy with the turnout from the ice hockey team. I think we hit the entire team here today, which is really great to see, particularly in their off week. I think it's really important to uh, do things like this and uh, interact with uh, individuals with disabilities. Hope they had some fun. It looked like they did. Saw some goals. We had some hits too, so it's all you can ask for in hockey, right? I think it's just like, you know, giving back to the community and putting a smile on everybody's faces. And I think for us, like, be grateful for what we have and obviously to be able to play hockey. This is just another form and I think, you know, we can obviously teach some things as well. Just gotta be grateful for it and appreciate what we have. His work ethic, his commitment to being an elite player, a standard of how you go about your business, how he treats everyone within the program. I think that's really important here. Yeah, let's be ready to go, boys. Let's play with a ton of energy today. Let's have fun out there. Go green on three. One, two, three. Go green. We're trying to establish a culture here of how you treat people. And whether we win or lose, uh, whether he plays well or not, he's an even keel guy. And I think he's got perspective, too. It hasn't always been easy. Having all those qualities rubbing off on our program it is big time. There's the power play goal. Muka. Miroslav Muka, the captain, ties it up. I was three years old when I had my skates on for my first time on then probably by the year five I was skating with a team and I think the biggest part when my parents were like yeah we want him in hockey was when the Slovakian team won the world championships in 2002. Hockey is a very popular sport in Slovakia and to win a tournament like that is very special for our country. To beat countries like Canada, us little Slovakia that has only like five million people, it was a big deal and people were definitely influenced by that. The facility I was playing at the year before I came to the United States was an hour away from my town and it didn't really make sense for me to drive up and down every day since I went to school in that town as well. I ended up getting an apartment. I think I was 14. It was always my dream to come to play in America, so my dad decided with my mom that it would be best for my development to try living by myself. And I think that was a big part for me before moving over here. It definitely helped me grow up and use the time management a little better, like figuring out when to go get groceries, when you have to go to school and spend the time at school, and then you know that you have to go practice right away and you'll be hungry right after practice, so you have to have something prepared. Jaloga immer noch, dann kommt der Pass! Und das Tor durch Miroslav. When I was in high school, we played in uh, Dallas in Texas where I probably would never end up ever in my life so it was it was very cool to see that part of the world. I also was in Helsinki in Finland. I was fortunate enough to go to Alaska probably three four times and that's a beautiful part of the world like the nature there is something that you don't see daily and I'm very thankful for that. Just inside the states like Minnesota, California was a big part too. We had a national tournament there for high school, so that was that was a very cool experience as well. The United States has the best hockey league in the world. It was always my goal to come here and play in the NHL, so that was one of the main reasons I wanted to come here and, and explore this country a little more. And then later on I got into my thoughts of playing college hockey, which made a lot of sense to me that you could play hockey at a very high level and get a very high education that's very well known all over the world. You can use this education anywhere you want. When I first started coaching at Shattuck, Miro was a junior. I was responsible for doing the skill work with the, all the players in the program. So he was the guy, though, that wanted to meet me there early in the morning. I think we'd go at like 6 a.m. He was the only guy out there to start. He's got an infectious personality, and, and he's got a drive to get better. And by the end of it, you know, we might have 30, 40 kids out there early in the morning. He wasn't even my coach and he was trying to develop my game like I was on his team so I thought that was very cool mindset of his that he would always was willing to help guys get better. I really liked him and I always was like oh I wish I could play for this guy one year. We moved on to juniors and Lake State after that. Now the puck control 
over the Mavs again. Stole it away, scored. Lakers put it in. Mooka, and that ends Dryden McKay's shutout. Oh, yeah, here we go. Day one. I decided that I want to try my luck at the portal, and uh, I think it was the May 13th, it was very late. I got reached out by Adam Nightingale, and I was very surprised. At first, I was like, oh, he probably just wants to catch up. And then as soon as I like put two and two together, I was like, oh, no way, that would be awesome to play for him. I called him right away, and I knew that, you know, you get an opportunity like this, it's about getting the best people, and, and people that you know are gonna believe in doing it the right way, you're gonna treat people the right way, you're gonna represent Michigan State the right way. I was almost sold as soon as I saw the number that called me. Took me over for a visit, and I visited this fabulous facilities here, and I was sold right away and ended up signing here. Literally, think like two days after I entered the portal, so it was, it was a very quick decision for me there. As it slips loose, Mueller. Come on, centering pass out front, back and oh, try. Oh! The Spartans score early, and it's the captain, Miro Muka means a lot like I'm, I'm super grateful I mean there's a lot of guys on this team that deserve to wear a C but I'm very happy that we have this group of guys here that have played so many years in this league and and I think that makes it very easy on me to be a leader on this team because I think there's five six guys that are great leaders and when we lead as a group I think that is uh, more powerful than just one guy so so it's it's awesome opportunity. At the end of the day, that's a big responsibility. And sometimes players think it's a glamorous thing, and the reality is leadership's really hard, and you got to be willing to do the right thing all the time and have tough conversations at times. And we were fully confident in his ability to do that, and he has done it. I went home in the summer for a quick weekend. We had like a little break in between the summer training and the season. And I showed my parents and like my family all this cool facilities we have here. And they decided that they want to come. So there's, I think, eight of them that came to, to a series, which is uh, financially very hard for like to fly over here. And, and none of them really spoke much English. So it was, it was hard for them to survive here. Getting on the ice and you, you look in the stands and you see Slovakian colors, you see Slovakian people cheering for you. It was a special night for sure and I, I really appreciate that uh, they sacrificed uh, their time and, and money to come and watch me play. Yes! Goal shot! Goal! <laughs> oh, how about that? Well, he'll remember that one. You always remember your first goal as a Spartan. Spartans keep it in off the draw. Oh, save! Goal for Michigan State. That one, no question. Miroslav Muka yeah. gives the Spartans the lead. It's awesome, especially when your parents come, and I'm very grateful that it happened. And uh, it was a lot of good efforts out there. The guys played really well, and uh, I was lucky to get rewarded. But um, it wasn't just me out there. It was uh, a lot, a lot of great efforts that went into it. Desať rokov alebo dvanásť rokov hrania hokeja dokázal veľmi veľa. Som veľmi hrdý na ňo za to, čo dokázal. A prijal by som si, aby hral v NHL. A myslím si, že na to pracoval veľmi tvrdo, aby sa dostal do NHL týmu. Miro's really got perspective, and that's important. He was at a smaller school before, and then to, to come here and see all the resources you know they have, and growing up in Slovakia, and then now to be able to play at Monty, seeing a variety of different rinks, you know. So I just think because he's traveled so much, a really perspective, and I think when he got on campus here, he could tell this is a real special spot. I always say that hockey players are very powerful, even after they leave the game of hockey. And uh, I think the main purpose for that is we know how to work in teams. Like you get so many friendships from here. Like the, the amount of people I've met over the last 10 years is, is crazy. I'm always trying to keep those contacts because you never know when you'll need them. And even like the language, like for me, English is the most used language around the world. And if there wasn't hockey, I don't think I would be able to get to as fluent 
as I am in English if I didn't play hockey because hockey brought me over here. And even like traveling, seeing different places, that I don't think I would be able to do that without hockey as well. To be a part of this culture means a lot to me because I feel like once you're a Spartan, you're always a Spartan. And even the cool thing is that 20 years from now, you turn on the TV and you see the Spartans play, you feel like you've been there just yesterday and you, you cheer on a football team or basketball team or the hockey team. And no matter what sport it is, you're in it together and it's always go green. Thank <laughs> you.